10 caps. Hello, me old China. It's Mickey Flanagan. Doing it Mangan style. It's Stephen Mangan. And their team captain, Sean Locke. And facing them tonight, Nats Entertainment. It's Natalie Cassidy. Standing tall, it's Humphrey Carr. And their team captain, John Richardson. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 16% of women say they lie about their age from time to time? And those times are between the ages of 28 and 53. 40% <laughs> of men would rather be single than bald. So finally, some good news for Justin Lee Collins. <laughs> And 23% of people think they're more productive when they work from home. I know I am, but that's because I'm a self-employed erection checker. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top three most popular talking points. John Steen, what do you think people have been talking about over the last week? Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> You I get so was nervous, on. I thought you were going to ask me first. <laughs> I, I just you get relax. so nervous in that moment. I go, who's he going to ask first? And you ask John. Phew. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not Sean and the twins. <laughs> I've got to say, it's true. You do look... We don't look like twins. We look like finalists in a What's Mika going to look like in 20 years? <laughs> 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 what have people been talking about over the last week? What do you think, Natalie? Um... The guy who um, did the nearly marathon fall skydive thing. The guy, <laughs> the guy who did the nearly marathon but thing skydive thing. it was 24 miles, thing. wasn't it? it, it well, it was, so it's yeah, nearly a marathon, isn't it? It was 23 miles up, though. That's not... I mean, traditionally how a marathon is run. <laughs> I know, but it's the same... I near could do the a mileage. like that. You just dropped me from 26 miles. <laughs> I reckon I'd break the world record as well. <laughs> yeah, like that. Suck on that, Paula Radcliffe. <laughs> I don't mean that. <laughs> When I first see, see it, it's oh. Cos there's so much cockney on that side. Do you know what I nearly said then? When I seen he done it. <laughs> and that's cos... When I, I just, seen he done it? When I seen he done a thing out of the scar, I was like, fuck it, hell. <laughs> when I, I saw he done it. When I saw yeah, what he done fell out of the sky and ting. <laughs> Because initially, when you watch it, it's amazing. Once you have footage of it, I thought, that's amazing. And then I thought, actually, you just ruined Alton Towers for yourself there, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> All he's done for the rest of his life now. Do we go on Nemesis? No. <laughs> <laughs> fell out of the sky, you dick. <laughs> when, he, when he fell out, I was really disappointed when he said, I'm, I'm coming home, or whatever it was. He said, that he, I thought all Austrians spoke like Arnie. That's, he's the only Austrian I've ever heard before. I was like, I'm coming home. <laughs> Get ready, everybody, here I come! <laughs> Let's have a look at Felix in action. What I don't understand is, why has he got handles on that thing? He's going to fall off it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why has he got, like, safety rope? Oh, careful, he's going to fall off. And to be honest, I wasn't impressed with the whole feat in any way. It's just <laughs> falling. Any idiot can fall. <laughs> I can fall any time you want. <laughs> uh, he's got a special suit. If I had a special suit, I'd fall over pretty much all day long. <laughs> I don't see what the impressive thing is. Well, the impressive thing is he didn't die. <laughs> you know that suit was $200,000. You could try and get hold of the receipt for your next tax return. <laughs> I'd have oh, to wear yeah. it on the show. <laughs> Hold, plenty more of that coming up. <laughs> Forehand on the news, they were saying, if, if the suit fails, if the suit fails, his blood is going to boil and his eyes will pop out of his head. And you're going, wow, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was fine. Well, Nothing. if you paid that much for a suit and it didn't work, my blood would boil as well. <laughs> I was hoping that they got, the, they got the calculations wrong and then when he let go, they got the gravity calculation where he'd gone up and stuck to the moon. <laughs> 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 it should have had a better suit on as well. It should have had like big flares and go faster stripes on it. It should have yeah. had just written yeah. on the back, fuck off! <laughs> or a trampoline at the bottom. You could just bounce. A trampoline, you could have. 
he could have broken the record twice if he'd had a trampoline. He'd have oh, and when he jumps out of that thing, there's somebody in there and they push an anvil out after him. <laughs> <laughs> It's a race to the ground. <laughs> Shall we have a look and see whether he's up there? Felix Baumgartner, the skydiver. <laughs> the most talked about thing over the last week. Yes, Austrian skydiver Felix Baumgartner became the first man to break the sound barrier by skydiving from 24 miles up. No human has travelled as fast unassisted since 1978 when Jimmy Savile heard St Mary's school choir were going on top of the pops. <laughs> What else have the nation been talking about over the last week? Well, Jimmy, the, the Starbucks, the coffee people. <laughs> they've, been <laughs> they've been a bit naughty. What have they done? The Storbs. What have they done? <laughs> <laughs> what have they done? They've Nothing. been at it, haven't they? They've been, not been paying tax. They don't pay any tax. They managed to sell. <laughs> 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 They sold £400 million worth of coffee last year and associated sundry items, and they lost £33 million. I assume down the back of those poxy sofas they have in the shop, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but they've, they've managed to make their books appear that they're losing money, and basically what they do is they, they take the losses from other countries and lump them onto the business here. It's endemic. It's not just the company as well, some of the staff as well. Look. <laughs> Earlier this year. Just after a meeting with their accountant. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> do you know what? Good luck to them. Good luck to you. If we could do it, we would. No, I don't agree. Why should they take advantage of a society which we pay for by selling us stuff and not contribute to that? <laughs> and anyone, anyone who buys a coffee from Starbucks is a mug. If you shop from Amazon, I was, I was, I, I had a Kindle. I loved Kindle. I had loads of them. I liked them so much. <laughs> I had a whole bookshelf of Kindles. <laughs> I thought they were brilliant. <laughs> then I found out that Amazon don't pay any tax, and I had to get rid of all these Kindles I was giving away. I said, "There's Pride and Prejudice." <laughs> That's the Taylor Sue cities there. <laughs> don't, no, no, don't let these people get away with it. I will try and take your advice, Sean, but I love a skinny cappuccino from in there. I think it's the best one. Because they are very passionate about getting their moderately tasty hot beverages out to people <laughs> uh, who can enjoy them in a sterile, faux, cosy environment while listening <laughs> to bland, amadine music. Have you heard the new Jack Johnson album, for example? <laughs> I went to a coffee shop, I have to say it wasn't Starbucks, but a while ago, and uh, the two people behind the bar were having a blazing row. Uh, and I was standing there for a few minutes, and eventually one of them turned to me and said, What? <laughs> I'd like a cappuccino, please. And they gave it to me. I said, Oh, would you mind putting a little bit more milk in there? She went, <sighs> took it, turned around to the milk frothing machine. I could see in the shiny thing. No, she didn't. Dribbling into the drink. So she put it down. I said, did you just dribble into my drink? She said, no. I said, I saw you in the shiny silver thing. And she said, well, what if I did? <laughs> Where was this? Which shop was it? It was actually at a, a, a motorway service station. Oh, well, you're asking for it, aren't you? <laughs> It wasn't a wild bean cafe, was it? No. Because don't break my heart. That uh, just <laughs> wild bean cafe, gourmet on the go. Wonderful. <laughs> if I do get married, that's where we're having our reception. <laughs> Starbucks defence. That was incredible. Starbucks defence was yeah, we don't pay a lot of tax, but we do buy a lot of local produce. Yeah, Morecambe Bay coffee beans. <laughs> where are you getting coffee beans from in the UK? So, oh, we buy cakes. Yeah, everyone buys cakes. It doesn't make you tax exempt, you piece of. <laughs> I mean, they're not technically doing anything illegal, are they, Jimmy? <laughs> I think I think it would be it would be wrong for me to joke about it. It would be sort of to use a coffee analogy. It would be the pot calling the kettle black. It would. <laughs> <laughs> they are one of the few places you can have a coffee and watch women getting their tits out. <laughs> There's a mother's breastfeeding, we think. In my one, where, where I am, there's like a, a thing there and there's all bushes on it. And when the breastfeeding mothers come in, you can just peep through the bushes <laughs> like that. It's almost like they're saying, oh, go on, enjoy your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just don't 
do you know that this is being recorded? <laughs> By reality television, it will be seen forever, and you'll be known as Mickey Milk Boo. <laughs> you know, here he comes, Mickey Milk. <laughs> They do encourage crime because they put all the chocolate there, don't they? And then the woman turns around and looks the other way. As soon as I just say, oh, go on then. <laughs> I think, though, that it's different, you know, a huge corporation like this. I mean, of what I would say is if you do go into a Starbucks, if you go into a Starbucks, you know they do that thing, goes, what, would you like your name on the coffee? You know they do that thing now? You say, yeah, I'd like my name. Could you put the name of taxpayer on the coffee, please? <laughs> And then you go, coffee for taxpayer. <laughs> Just do that. Just keep doing that. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether this is up there. <laughs> yes, this week it was revealed Starbucks have avoided paying tax for three years. I'll tell you what, if Starbucks get taken to court, they better have a good barista. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. Is it the, this, this football match? This wasn't so much the football match as the hideous racial abuse. I like to focus on the positives, John. Yeah? <laughs> there, was, there was a brief 90-minute period of football. Yeah. And then some racism broke out. <laughs> I think the Serbians saw it the other way round. I think they thought, well, we were having some lovely racism, and then there was a bloody football <laughs> match. There was bloody football got in the way. It sort of ruined it for everyone. <laughs> they did monkey chants at Danny Rose because he's black, and they threw a seat at the goalkeeper, Jack Buckland, because he has a bottom. <laughs> <laughs> well, interestingly, the Serbian authorities have actually blamed the racism on Danny, Danny Rose. Rose. They, said, they said it was his fault. <laughs> the sort of blanket denial is just... You, you sort of can't argue with it when, they just, when there's film footage and they go, no, we didn't. It's really difficult. It's, it's almost brilliant. You just think, but they clearly did. <laughs> if they say they didn't, then maybe I'm wrong, because... <laughs> It seems so sure, even though I just watched it. <laughs> if you'd have taken a, a, a documentary of the 70s in football in the UK and then took it anywhere else, you'd have said, look, look at these people, they're, they're maniacs. You know, they're all racist. So we can't be sure that just a few supporters are sim symbolic of the whole Serbian race. We're fairly certain. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... Yeah, we're 99% sure, but we should allow a little bit of doubt in There that. was one fella who wasn't racist. <laughs> he was black. <laughs> and the other thing, that the England team were playing in Poland in that very exciting roof fiasco. Uh, the forecast, very heavy rain, so they decided to leave the roof open. And then there was heavy rain, and they wanted to shut the roof, but they can't shut the roof because it was raining. <laughs> and then the next day, the sun came out, so they shut the roof. <laughs> um, the players had all been given Pro Plus, apparently, before the game to get them all, mm. you know, awake and stuff. Uh, but they didn't play the game, so they hadn't sort of run off all the caffeine. So they gave them sleeping pills, and they reckon the this is absolutely true. They reckon the sleeping pills are the reason we were so shit uh, the following day. I, I'm surprised, though, that they only gave them sleeping pills. You imagine the England team have got a night off in Eastern Europe. Mm. I'm surprised they weren't shooting them with tranquilizers. <laughs> 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 Roy Hodgson's just carrying them onto the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Get Gerard like he's to be hunting deer or something. <laughs> What's incredible about the, the state of British television is that they're just an empty stadium, just literally two hours of wet grass, still got more viewers than Great British Bake Off. <laughs> People were faced with the option of going, should we watch that wet grass or someone doing a cake? <laughs> you never know, the grass might grow a bit. <laughs> It was brilliant how you could just see all the ITV sort of commentary team and pundits just panicking, and like all the cricket commentators were like, "Get a load of these wankers! <laughs> we often do three days worth of just wet grass." <laughs> I was hoping at one point Agent Charles would start doing magic stuff, like going. Doop, doo -doo -doo. <laughs> <laughs> I think your view of magic and mine may be different. <laughs> I'm not sure whether that is magic. What is that? Why is that? Got that <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm mesmerised. Thank God you got into comedy shows. <laughs> I don't oh, have that. my props with me. <laughs> well, I can tell you it's not one of the top three. But last week, the England under-21 team were subjected to alleged racist abuse during a match against Serbia. I'm not saying the Serbian team are wrong -uns, but suspicions were raised when they brought out their mascot and it was John Terry. 
OK, fingers on buzzers. One more thing to get. Go on, what do you think, Sean? Is it the Rolling Stones? Uh, back on the road, man! <laughs> Let's have a look at the Rolling Stones. I think they look like a great collection of Toby jugs. <laughs> Yeah. It's a it's a mighty money making venture, isn't it? So they're getting fifteen million quid from doing this, and on top of that, they still get their winter heating allowance as well. <laughs> they're charging four hundred pounds for the top tickets. They're going to make fifteen million in four shows because they're all about the fans, and because they're all about the fans, they let their fan clubs have the first dibs. On the, oh, no, they didn't. Sorry, they let the uh, American Express card holders have first... <laughs> American Express card has got first go on the We Now Smell of We tour. <laughs> yeah, the merchandise will probably be, like, something you pee into during the gig. <laughs> but it's got Mick Jagger's lips on it. Yeah. <laughs> The Stones have been ruined for me, because in Keith Richards' autobiography, he talks at great length about the fact that Mick Jagger has enormous testicles and a very small penis. <laughs> and now, whenever I think about The Stones, all I can think about is Mick's little chipolata on top of two <laughs> space-hopper bollocks, <laughs> uh, which is, is a very unpleasant uh, image in my head. They've said they might play Glastonbury, haven't they? Yeah, they've said they might play Glastonbury. They might do, year. if yeah. the weather's all right. No, if they're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the massive road crew, they have one guy whose job is just to iron Keith. Before they... <laughs> <laughs> he just puts Keith out. Oh, no, more like, oh, Keith, yeah, you leave it's all right, we're in a couple of hours, so yeah, lift you up there. <laughs> Their greatest hits album, this is the shittest album title I've ever heard. Their greatest hits album is going to be called Grrr. <laughs> I think what it was is they were typing greatest hits and one of them just fell asleep on the keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You've got to respect them, though. You've got to respect yeah. them. They've been in the business so long they can remember when Jimmy Savile was young enough to be a victim. <laughs> That's how long they've been around. <laughs> I can tell you that it's not one of the most talked about things this week, but the Rolling Stones are getting back together. The core lineup of the Stones has remained unchanged since 1962, with Mick Jagger on lead vocals, Charlie Watts on drums, and Keith Richards on heroin and amphetamines. <laughs> Good on the Stones for touring again. Normally, at their age, rock and roll is just what you have to do to get out of a low chair. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. Is it the uh, Scottish independence? Uh, they've agreed to have a referendum on Scottish independence. They, they have indeed. They've I mean, set a date. They've set a date. Have they actually set the date? They've set the well, 2014, yes. Because they're going to let 16 and 17 year olds vote in Scotland, so they've got to give them a year to sort out babysitters and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> to set the date for 2014. Why can't they do it earlier than that? Banakborn! They've got to give me... I <laughs> 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 think John's ordering cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 700th anniversary of the Battle of Bannockburn. Banakborn! Banakborn! Right. This is one of the only two battles Scotland's Bye. ever won. <laughs> there, there, there's only one question allowed in this referendum. They wanted a, a second question and, and, and Parliament would allow them. And the second question was, what the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> I think before the referendum, we should sell it off. So it'd be called, like, the O2 Highlands. <laughs> That's the money. Yeah. yeah. And then, what are they going to do about everything? What are they going to put on the, uh, the notes up there, the money? What, are they going to put Lulu on there or something? <laughs> no, they invented, this, they invented a lot of stuff. They invented the, the steam engine, the electric light bulb, the television, this expression. <laughs> Before, when people felt like that, south of the border, they used to go... <laughs> <laughs> then the Scots came along and went. <laughs> <laughs> the Scottish are very. They've, they've just canned a marketing campaign. This is how confident they are with Scotland. They had this gem lined up to advertise Edinburgh. Incredinburgh! <laughs> 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 oh, <they did> <laughs> and they shelved it. They thought, we don't need it. We don't need to go there. I say every town should be advertised like that. Well done, Dee. <laughs> <laughs> What about in the best? In the best. Glasgow, <laughs> 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 fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's more <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Let's have a look and see if the referendum is up there. Very easy. <laughs> Relax, finished, everyone. Yeah. Just whoa, whoa, take, take finished, a moment, yeah. everyone. This, this is the killer. Sean Locke, everyone. Yabba Dabba Dean. <laughs> Yabba Dabba Dean. <laughs> so those were the most talked about things this week. But in other news, former Bosnian Serb leader Radovan Karadzic is on trial for orchestrating genocide. Bad enough to commit genocide, but to set it to music, that's just sick. <laughs> The Attorney General has blocked the publication of candid letters written by Prince Charles. I think Prince Charles should get back to doing what he does best, waiting grimly for the death of his mother. <laughs> and in footballing news, John Terry isn't appealing. I could have told you that. <laughs> so at the end of that round, John, Natalie and Humphrey have one point, Sean, Mickey and Stephen have two points. <laughs> That's it for part one, see you after the break. Cats. Our next round is pick of the polls. Sean, Mickey, Stephen, your turn first. What do you like the look of? The cups. The party you going for? The party. Oh, okay. well, here's a clip to illustrate your question. Well, it's the real-life risky business. A teenager holds an alcohol fueled party for hundreds of kids while his unsuspecting parents are on holiday. 16-year-old Corey Worthington is now facing not only the wrath of mum and dad, but a $20,000 fine from police. I spoke to him a short time ago. Corey, thanks for joining us. The only question that I can think to ask is, what were you thinking? Um, I wasn't really. Did your parents say you could have a party? Um, no. Your parents were out of town. You put out the invitation. You started it. Why don't you make a grown-up decision now and accept responsibility, take off those glasses and apologise to everybody that you frightened, to the police who were forced to retreat and whose cars have been damaged, and to the community who have had to pay for this? Take, your, take a few I'll, glasses and apologise to us. I'll say sorry, but I'm not taking off my glasses. OK, Corey, we've got to wrap this up, but what would you say to other kids who were thinking of partying when their parents are out of town? Get me to do it for you. Get you to do it for you, not don't do yes. it. Nah, get me to do it for you. Best party ever so far. That's what everyone's been saying, so... Well, we've got to go, but I suggest you go away and uh, take a good, long, hard look at yourself. I have. Everyone has. They love it. <laughs> what, what, sorry, what's, what's the story? What happened there? Well, he basically organised a party and, like, hundreds of people came to the party when his parents were away and there's a massive riot. Did yeah. they find the advocar? <laughs> well, you know if you've been at a party you go, I think I had an advocar, you know you've drunk everything. <laughs> a bit of tea and Maria out of a dog bowl. You <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't find any glasses. You've <laughs> no. still got a bit of dog food in the corner. Oh. Just swill it round yeah, the lump of dog yeah. meat. <laughs> 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 OK. Most people would rather host a house party than go to one. True or false? I don't go to many house parties anymore. I go to a lot of four, fourth and fifth children's birthday parties these days. I don't have kids. I just <laughs> prefer the food and games they play. I like all the stuff about parties. I like doing a big shop and putting loads of nibbles out. And then I always... This is true, I genuinely realise I haven't really invited anyone. <laughs> I don't really like people in my house. <laughs> it's that bit when you go to text people and you say, oh, I don't like you. Uh, I don't mind you, but not in my house. <laughs> if I invite you, I'll have to invite him. Yeah, and you'll bring your girlfriend and touch each other and talk about it. <laughs> Come to my house and fiddle in my conservatory, not on my snacks. <laughs> you want to be in love, you stay at home and cater for yourself. <laughs> Bloody travelling chef for your sex games. <laughs> Don't put that on the invite, though. <laughs> I had a party a little while ago at home. Did you? It was my daughter's second birthday. What it is with, with toddlers, your parents can't leave two-year-olds, so you have to invite the whole family. So everyone you invited had, like, a plus two? <laughs> had a plus two. So they can't get there. No, they can't get there. No, but when they're five or six, they can be dropped There's off. There's a fiver for the cab. They can You've be got dropped the address. off. Why do people nick remote controls? 
At parties. Hang on, I'll ask Mickey. <laughs> I, bet he, I bet he has. Because you lose yours <laughs> and you think it might work. <laughs> it might <be> go. <laughs> do you think you might have lost it? No, I've not lost it. Do what I do when if, if ever I drop a piece of hash. Turn all the lights <laughs> off <laughs> and you get down on the carpet with a torch. <laughs> and you just <laughs> go across the carpet. <laughs> Mickey, they're going to take your kids away. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, they'll pick it, you'll pick it up. And the cheer that goes up when you find it is phenomenal. <laughs> How many people are there? Sorry? How many people Just are there? Two. Me, me mum, me <laughs> mum. <laughs> and this is all from 10, 12 years ago, you know, for insurance yeah. purposes. <laughs> 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 what is the latest you've ever left a party? It was my birthday recently, and I was out until 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I left a party once at uh, um, <laughs> half past ten in the morning. <laughs> I went over the park and sat opposite a pub that I knew was going to open in about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and then reached in my pocket and found a can of Stella. <laughs> And ended up still drunk in this park, opening a can of Stella, waiting for the pub to <laughs> open. Like that. And a woman sat down and I went, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Your dog's quite nice, isn't he? <laughs> and I realised I'd become a tramp in 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Often when you walk past people in, in the park, you think, oh, it's terrible, something horrible's happened to them, but maybe they've just had a big night out. Yeah. <laughs> they had a big night out and they collected loads of cardboard and some shit-stained sleeping bags. <laughs> and they sort of piled them all together in the doorway of a shop. <laughs> and they've got a dog and a shopping trolley <laughs> full of bags and cones and stuff. And they've got the dog there and they've written loads of stuff asking for money. Just one night out. <laughs> Somehow, all those things, that confluence of things came together. <laughs> oh, I had sex with a tramp recently. <laughs> I didn't have any change, and you can't just walk past and give them nothing. Can you? <laughs> 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 okay, so most people would rather host a house party than go to one true or false. What are you going to go with, Sean? False. You're going false? Okay, what, what do you think, Sean? We're going to say true. You're saying true. OK. So and most people would rather host a house party than go to one. True or false? I can tell you the answer is false. <laughs> Only 24% of people would rather host a house party than go to one. I like to party like it's 1999. Everything's a little bit cheaper and I'm not with my current girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> quite funny, but she's going to kill me. <laughs> The worst thing is when you turn up at a house party dressed as Batman and then you realise, A, it's not fancy dress, B, you haven't been invited, C, it's Christmas Eve, and D, she won't let you in to see your kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's one point for John's team and three points for Sean's team. Yeah. That's it for part two. See you after the break. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your first one. Coolest job. Window cleaner. <laughs> it's that bit when you know when the windows all... They've sponged it all and it's all messy and then they get the squeegee. <laughs> oh, imagine a round window. Get right round it like that. <laughs> Look at his face! What about, what about at the beginning when they toss the whole bucket all over the window? Oh, <laughs> oh nice big window like that. Excuse me. Oh, it's, it's filthy, that window, John. <laughs> it's filthy. There's, there's grime's been caked on there for months. Oh. <laughs> oh. Dribbling down at the sides. Oh, yeah. It? <laughs> it's getting down onto the window below, and that's even dirtier. Oh, I'm going to get it. Oh, I'm going to get it. <laughs> Fairness, you forgot about the most beautiful part of window cleaning because I used to uh, be a window cleaner. You go up into the corner, down, round, right, and then and then Don't you rush then it, man. two two little flicks. <laughs> you, you flick to the side once, bang. You flick to the other side, bang. 
until in the end you end up with a little arc of foam there and there's a final little <laughs> pull away, chamois out, lively. <laughs> The interesting thing is Mickey was never taught that. The Cockneys are born with it. It's just... <laughs> it's their way. I used to work in, um, in a dog food factory. And my job was to make sure the dog food really stank. <laughs> because, you know, when people... So that people don't confuse it with normal meat. So they put... You have to put this stuff in it. You know when you open a tin of dog food and you go, oh... <laughs> and I had to put this stink stuff to mix it up, this stink stuff. And as it came past, I used to just put a bit in. And one day I mixed it up a bit too strong, and a lot of people complained the company was sued because it was so strong people were opening and snapping their necks. They were getting whiplash from dog food. Whiplash because I made it too stinky. <laughs> and then I got to the parachute factory. What did you have to do at the parachute factory? I used to have to cut all the wires of the parachute with scissors. <laughs> but I didn't. That's what I thought I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's the coolest job being a sales assistant in Topshop because they seem to think they're pretty fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> we do, I do trousers that go up to size extra small. <laughs> yeah, no, I, str I struggle. I'm six foot seven and I struggle with trousers. You struggle with trousers? I struggle with finding trousers that will fit me. Not oh, the concept. Get them off, yeah. What is... Uh, uh. I put my leg in the pocket. <laughs> Are you really six foot seven? Yeah. You don't look six foot seven. He's sitting down. <laughs> if I stand up. If I really stand up. I'll stand up. Uh, oh. John, can we get you to stand up as well? <laughs> <laughs> Let's give Rico a bit of a humiliating. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm the freak in this equation. <laughs> That looks like a really awkward first day in prison. <laughs> Stephen, what do you think? Coolest job? Uh, well, before I came on, I thought an actor would be a cool job, but Is exciting. it not great? Well, my first audition, there was a middle-aged, sweaty man on his own with a camera. <laughs> he, said, he said, look into the camera, say your name, take your top off, <laughs> and growl like a tiger. <laughs> Absolutely true. Stephen, you got the right answer. Apparently, the coolest job is working as an actor. The pretty girl that lives next door to me has been in a few films. She'll be livid if she ever finds out. <laughs> okay, best way for a man to show his sensitive side. Cry during sex. <laughs> I can't bear him in the cry. You can't bear him in the cry. No, I can't bear him. There are only two times when it is acceptable for a man to cry in public, and that is when your team gets relegated and when your family gets killed on the day your team gets relegated. <laughs> <laughs> You're a proper I knew manager. you were going to say that. <laughs> I do sometimes cry when bad things happen, yeah. Like the mark in the cupboard's not quite right for you. <laughs> the handle's facing the wrong way, I don't yeah. like. <laughs> I like it when the handle's moved. When the handle's moved, that means I've had visitors. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can still smell them on it. <laughs> People don't like sensitive men, do they? You, women don't, do they? No, not really, I don't think. I'm supposed to say, like, oh, yeah, everyone's dead. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think? What, what, how did is it... Is well, you, showing... play, you played uh, a pregnant man recently, didn't you? I did, yeah. You I did. Play. <laughs> how did it pan out in the end? Was it, did it all work out well with I you? Got, the... I got postnatal depression. <laughs> After the reviews? <laughs> 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 OK, best way for a man to show a sense of size. Is it talk about <laughs> your feelings? That's exactly the right is answer. It? Right. <laughs> The best way for a man to show his sensitive side is for him to talk about his feelings. I find it difficult to show my sensitive side because it's the area between my balls and my anus. <laughs> I consider myself a metrosexual, by which I mean I try and hide my erection with a free newspaper. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are John, Natalie and Humphrey have one point, Sean, Mickey and Stephen are tonight's winners. They've got five. Our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night.